Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and today I'm going to be talking to you about and reading the entirety of the Eric poem Baldur's Traumar, Baldur's Dreams. Now the poem Baldur's Traumar is not part of the Codex Regis manuscript along with most of the poems that are included in what we call today the Poetic Edda. Instead, this poem comes from one single medieval manuscript, the manuscript AM 748 1 quarto, which also is a second source for some poems that are in the Codex Regius, such as Grimnismol and Horbarsliod. However, even though this poem is not in the Codex Regius, it is traditionally included in Old Norse language editions of the Poetic Era, such as the most recent by Jonas Kristjansson and Vjesteden Olason and also in translations of the Poetic Edda and other languages, such as my English language translation. This poem is called Baldur's Dramar in that medieval manuscript, AM 748 1 quarto, but in some early modern paper manuscripts based on that manuscript, it's given a different title, Vegtams Kvida, meaning Poem of Vegtamr, Road Tame which is the name that Odin assumes when he's talking to the Volva, or Cirrus, that he wakes up in this poem. Now, Odin waking up the dead, uh, especially a dead Volva or Cirrus, uh, to talk to her is not an unusual thing in Norse mythology. Odin is uh, capable, as he boasts in uh, Hovamal, of waking up the dead and making them speak to him. And uh, he does this, of course, in one other famous poem in Old Norse, the poem Voluspo, Prophecy of the Cirrus of the Volva, which tells of creation and of Ragnarok. And here, uh, much more explicitly, she is dead as part of the narrative frame of the poem is him going to hell to wake her up. Now keep in mind that hell, of course, in Old Norse uh, mythology is spelled with one L. That is not the same as Christian hell. Uh, it is not a place of uh, fire and terror. It is just a shadow world of the living that is very physical, as I've discussed in my video about uh, Old Norse concepts of the afterlife, which I'll link in a card in the top right corner here for those of you uh, who might be curious and haven't seen that. So she seems to have experienced what's happened to her body after death. Uh, we'll see that in Sansa 5, where she talks about being uh, covered in rain and snow. Now, this poem, like Voluspa, uh, which I alluded to earlier, is in the meter called Forn ir the Slag. This is pretty, uh, pretty typical for Old Norse narrative poems. Um, in fact, uh, narrative poems with the title Kvitha, uh, as one of the alternate titles of this poem, Vegtams Kvitha, tend to be in Forn ir the Slag. All right, so let me start reading this. Um, note that I'm going to use Old Norse pronunciation from about the 1200s, so about the time uh, that most of the Eric poems were written down uh, that is different from the modern Icelandic pronunciation that most people uh, on the internet use when they're uh, uh, talking about Old Norse. But I think it is more interesting to present it uh, as uh, it would have sounded, uh, at least for the people writing it down, maybe not for the people composing it, as many of the Eddic poems really date to about the 900s uh, when there were some additional things uh, that I don't try to imitate like nasal vowels in Old Norse. Uh, there's nothing about Baldur's Traumater that makes us very confident that it's particularly old. It is probably later than Voluspa, as we'll see in uh, stanza 11. There is language probably directly borrowed from Voluspa. And since Voluspa itself isn't one of the oldest poems in the Poetic Edda, it's probably very end of the 900s, I would say. Uh, that would make Baldur's Traumater uh, somewhat later uh, than that even. So I think a pretty conservative estimate might be that this is a poem of the the 1000s, probably the early 1000s, uh, composed by someone who already knows other Eddic poems and is sort of probably summing up uh, some of the traditions in those other poems. We'll see, for instance, uh, in this very first stanza that we have three lines that are identical to lines in Thrymskvida, uh, stanza 14, and Thrymskvida is a poem uh, that I would confidently date to, uh, uh, let's say, before 975-ish, based on uh, some alliteration features. All right, Baldur's Thramar, stanza one. Sen varu asir allir o thingi, 
och åsignor allar o måli, och umthat redu rikir tivar, hui veri baldri, baldir draumar. Once the Asir were all at a meeting, at a council of thing, and the Osinur, the female Asir, all at speech. And they spoke about that, Redu Umthat, the powerful gods, Rikir Tivar, why there were bad dreams, Baldr, Hui, Vari Baldir, Dramar, Baldri. And those first uh, six lines of stanza one are identical to six lines and three of the stanza 14, as I mentioned before. Stanza two. Up res odin, aldin geuter, og han o sleipni sodru um lagdi, reid han nither thada nivel heljar til, muti han huelpi, theim er or helju kom. Odin rose up, aged progenitor, aged uh, begetter, aged father, aged <laughs> something along those lines. Uh, the manuscript text says Alda Gauter, which would be progenitor of men. Uh, I'm agreeing with the annotation by Jonas Christianson and Vjesteden Olason to Alden Gauter, uh, as that is uh, more in line with other titles for him and makes a little bit more sense. And he laid a saddle on Sleipnir, his eight-legged horse. Then he rode down from there to Nivelhel, Lower Hell. He met the whelp, the puppy, the dog, which came out of hell. Who is this? Probably the same as the grammar that is mentioned in Volusbol and by Snorri, and that grammar may be the same as the wolf Wolfnir, who we know is chained up somewhere around here in the Norse mythic cosmos, which of course we don't have any definitive atlases to. Sansa 3. So var blodugur um briost framan, og galdrus fodur gól um lengi. Fram reyð óðin, foldvegr dunði, hann komat hófu heljarani. That one was bloody forward on its breast, on its chest, and sang the, uh, there's a couple different things you could do here. The dog could be singing at the magic's father, Galdr's father being Odin for a long time. You might also just possibly see father here as being um, the word in Odin's title, all father, which is not the same as the word for father, which has uh, oblique cases father. Um, so Odin perhaps singing here, but I think it's more likely this is the dog and that father is the oblique uh, case of, uh, of father, not the nominative of uh, father Odin's title, which might mean order rather than uh, father, as I've explained in a video I'll link to the on the top right. Odin rode forward, the earth road uh, rumbled, made noise. This is the same thing that we hear happened in uh, the prose era when his son Hermother went to hell after Odin's death. Uh, so maybe because this road and this bridge into hell are made for the dead, maybe the living way more, and that's why we hear that the road rumbles or makes noise whenever these living men or gods go over it. He came at the high house of hell. Now, uh, just as a side note, that word for house there, uh, ran, is the word that's in ran, sack, right? Search the house. Sansa 4. Thor eith odin fyr austan dyr, thar er han visi volu leidi. Nam han vitugri valgaldr kveða, Uns naudi grace, nos ord um kvad. Then Odin rode east of the doors. So he's he's gotten to um, he's gotten to the house of hell, but he's 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 driving around it, where he knew uh, vulva's paths, or where he knew led to a vulva. Then the then he began, nam, han nam kveda, he began to speak to the magic knowing woman, the vitugri, woman is understood, Valgaldr, 
slain magic. So Galdr's magic and Val is the same word as in Valhul, Hall of the Slain, Hall of, Hall of the Dead. Until forcibly she rose, Nevig Reis, and spoke corpse's words, Kvad Nos or Um, as usual, is a filler word. And here is the Volva herself speaking. What er manathat, mer okunra, er mer hevir aukit ervit sinni? Var ek snivin snjobi, ok slegen regni, ok driven doko, daud var ek lengi. What is that man? What kind of man is that, unknown to me, who has increased heavy company? For me, who has increased difficult company for me. I was snowed on with snow, sniven snjovi, struck with rain, slegen regni, and driven with dew, driven dogu. I was dead a long time, ekvar deud, lengi. Now, Odin responds in stanza six. Vegtamr ek heiti, sonor emek valtams, segdu mer or helju. Ek mun or hemi. Huem eru bekir baugum sonir, flet fagrliga flod guldi. I am named Vegtamr, so road tame, accustomed to roads. I am son of Valtamr, dead tame, accustomed to the dead, accustomed to the slain, especially those slain in battle. Tell me out of hell, Sigdumer or Helu, I will out of the world. So you tell me, you know, the news or what have you from the, the world of the dead, I'll tell you from the world of the living. For who, or whom, if you want to be pretentious about it, are the benches sewn with rings? So uh, the benches uh, for, for sitting, for feasting in hell, are covered in, in rings, and the floor fairly, foggily, uh, layered in gold. So, so the floor and the benches are covered with gold as if to welcome some great uh, uh, visitor. The Volv responds in stanza seven. Her stender baldri of Bruggen Jover, skirar vegar liker skjolder uvir, en osmeker i ovvani, neudug sagdak nu monek thegja. Here, the mead stands brewed for Balder, the bright drinks, a shield lies over. That's to keep the mead uh, from getting particles and dust in it while they're waiting to serve it. But the godsons Osmegir in overhope of Fanny. I spoke forcibly, now I will be silent. So Thegya there is uh, an emendation many editors make for the manuscript Sekia, which is to say, which doesn't make sense because in all the stanzas that end with her saying that, he then says, don't be silent, right? Which wouldn't make sense if she was saying, now I'm going to continue talking. Now Odin tells her not to shut up in stanza eight. Sekia tu volva, thick vil ek regna, uns alt kunak vil ek en vita. Quer man baldri at vana verda, ok udens son aldri rana. Don't shut up, Volva, don't be silent, Volva. I want to ask you until I know all. This is an emendation from the manuscripts al kuna, uh, which isn't uh, a grammatical word in of itself. Uh, if we take it as al kuna, two separate words, there's still not a grammatical form of all to be the object of kuna, uh, I may know. So I'm amending it to alt, uh, so we get a nice accusative singular neuter there, and uh, kuna or kunak. I want to know who will become the killer of Baldr, where mun verda atbana baldri, and steal the life, rana aldri, from Odin's son, Odin's son. She responds in stanza nine, Hother ber hovan hrother bavum thinnig, han mun baldri at bana verda, ok uthin son aldri rana, neudu sagdach nu monek thegja. Hother 
bears the high famous tree, Hrothr Babam, if we accept an emendation most editors make. The manuscript is Hrothr Barm, which you could read as famous side or something. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, John Lindo does think that's legitimate and interprets it as meaning Balder. I think admitting the Hrothr Babam, given the context, uh, the mistletoe tree that is used to kill Balder makes a lot of sense. He will kill Balder, Han Mun Verda Atbana Baldri, and steal the life of Odin's son. I spoke forcibly, now I will be silent. Stanza 10. Thegja tu volva, thik vil ek fregna, uns alt kunna, vil ek en vitta. Hver mun heft hevi, hevent o vinna, et a Baldr's bana, o bol vera. Don't be silent, Volva. I want to ask you until I know everything I want to know. Who will work avenge the hateful deed of Hother? Where moon vena heavent heft heavy? Or way out, lay out, vega, Baldur's killer, Baldur's bana on a funeral pyre or a ball. Who will kill Baldur's killer in turn? Stanza 11. Rinder ber vola i vester solum. Solmun uthen sonner ein nætter vega. Hond um fær ne hovud kember. Oder o bol um ber balders anskota. Neudug sagdak nu mun ek thegia. Rinder bears voli in halls to the west vester solum. That Odin's son, so Odin's sonner, will fight one night old, Munbega ein natter. He will not wash his hand, fair hond, nor comb his head, kember hovud, before he bears Baldur's enemy shooter, Anskolta, on a funeral pyre or a bowl. Neudug sagdak, nu monek thegia. Sansa 12. Thegia tu volva. Thick will ek fregna, uns all kuna, will ek en vita. Hwerjar, ruther moyar, erat muni grota, ok o himin verpa, holsa scoutum. Don't be silent, Volva. I want to ask you until I know everything. I want to know still. Who are those young women who weep about their beloved? Munar, for beloved is. Uh, known, for instance, from uh, Hovmol. In uh, stanza 96, Hovmol waits for his lover to come in the reeds and, and uses the term Munner for her. And throw into heaven the sheets of their necks. This has been interpreted as the flaps of their hoods, also as, um, as the, uh, the, the crest of waves, so that these nine, well, it doesn't even say nine, but a lot of people, here even I'm being influenced by how much people read into this, uh, people have interpreted this as the wave somehow weeping for Balder, but who these women may be is, is completely unclear. Now, Mats Malm, in an influential article on Baldrstramar, Baldrstramar, literally and literarily, uh, points out that this is Odin's last question in the short poem, and it's impossible. Normally, when he gets a last question in and it's impossible, his question is, what did Odin say in Balder's ear before he put him on the funeral pyre? Right, that's what he says in Vathrud in the Small and the Porticata. It's what he says in the Riddles of Gestumblindi and uh, Hervar Saga. But here he can't use that impossible question because Baldur's not dead yet. Sansa 13. Erta tu vegtamr semek hugtha, heldr ertu odin aldin gautr. You are not vegtam like I thought, rather are you odin, the old progenitor. Stanza 14. Erta tu volva ne vis kona, helder ertu thrigya torsa moether. You are not a volva, not a wise woman. Rather are you the mother of three giants or monsters or enemy supernatural beings. This has caused people to believe this might be Angerboda, mother with Loki of uh, Fenrir, Hel, and uh, Jormungandr. But again, this reading into it, we don't know that that's necessarily the mother of three monsters that is meant here. Sansa 15. Heim rithu odin, ok ver hodiger, svo komet manna mer aftero vit. 
erlaus loki lider or bondum, ok ragna rok, riuvender coma. Ride home, Odin, and be triumphant. So will not come more men again on a visit. So no more, no more men will come again uh, on a visit. When, almost meaning until here, air, Loki passes loose out of his bonds, out of his chains, Laus or Bondum, and destroying Ragnarok, Ryuvendr Ragnarok, comes. Coma. And that is the text of the very short poem, Baldur's Draumar. Now, elsewhere on this channel, of course, I have, I can't remember what number it is now, something like 300 videos. Uh, or is it 200? I, I, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> but I cover many different topics in Norse language and myth. Uh, among them, I have done read-throughs of three much longer poems in the Poetic Edda. I've done Volusba, that poem of creation in Ragnarok, also narrated by a dead Volva, Odin wakes up. I've done Grimnismol, and I've done Hovamol. Now, note with Hovamol that that read-through is about to be pretty strongly superseded by the um, massive book, uh, The Wanderer's Hovamol, uh, that'll be published uh, this fall uh, by Hack Publishing Company. That will be uh, my uh, uh, thoroughly uh, commented uh, text of, of Hovamol in Old Norse, along with my English translation, the Kaaba Hovamol, some other uh, poems related to Odin, so watch for that. And uh, if you enjoy these videos, I hope that you'll also check out uh, my other published books. I've done uh, a translation of the Poetic Edda, which includes Baldur's Traumar, and, uh, and of course, Hovamol, although not with all of the extensive apparatus it's going to have in the new book. And I also translated the Saga of the Volsungs and the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, and both of those are also available as audiobooks read by me. Well, for now, from high in uh, early summer Wyoming, I am wishing you all the best.